Yellowstone supervolcano rocked by aftershocks of the 1959 earthquake in 2017 and 2018. University of Utah reports a swarm of more than 3,000 small earthquakes in the Maple Creek area in Yellowstone National Park, but outside of the Yellowstone volcano caldera, between June 2017 and March 2018, are at least in part aftershocks of the 1959 quake. On August 17, 1959, back when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president, the U.S. had yet to send a human to space and the nation's flag spotted 49 stars, Yellowstone National Park shook violently for about 30 seconds. That shock was strong enough to drop the ground a whopping 20 feet in some places. It toppled the dining room fireplace of the Old Faithful Inn. Groundwater swelled up and down in wells as far away as Hawaii. How is it that what happened in Yellowstone had an effect and what happened all the way away, it's over 4,000 miles, all the way to Hawaii. 28 people lost their lives at that point in uh, Yellowstone. It went down in Yellowstone history as a Hebgen Lake earthquake. It had a magnitude of 7.2. And in, 19, in 2017, nearly 60 years and 11 presidents later, the Hebgen Lake quake shook Yellowstone again a swarm of more than 3,000 small earthquakes in the Maple Creek area in Yellowstone National Park, but outside of the Yellowstone volcano caldera. And now I'm going to give you my thoughts on what happened in 2017 as well. Um, now, 3,000 quakes in the swarm in Maple Creek area, Yellowstone National Park, but outside the Yellowstone volcano caldera, between June 2017 and March 2018 are, at least in part, aftershocks of the 1959 quake. Now that's according to a study published in Geophysical Research Letters by University of Utah, geoscientists led by Gyu Ning Pang and Keith Cooper. Quote, these kinds of earthquakes in Yellowstone are very common, says Copper, director of the University of Utah seismograph stations. He says these swarms happen very frequently. This one was a little bit longer and had more events than normal. And Pang adds, we don't think it will increase the risk of an eruption. Now let's remember, this is, it went on up to March of 2018. A little bit later is when we had the beginning of the Hawaii Kilauea eruptions. It could be since uh, Yellowstone has some kind of a connection with Hawaii, it could be that that also has a connection, the Yellowstone quakes of spring of 2018 perhaps also affected the magma chamber under the big island of Hawaii and having something to do with the eruptions there as well. Who knows? That's, that's what I wanted to uh, express to you. Now going on with the article. A long seismic tail, taken together, the more than 3,000 small quakes of the Maple Creek swarm can be divided into two clusters. The northern cluster consists of Hebgen Lake aftershocks. The quakes felt along the same fault line and were oriented the same way as the Hebgen Lake event. Also, the team did not see signs that the northern cluster was caused by movement of magma and other fluids beneath the ground. Copper and Pang say it's not unheard of for aftershocks of a large earthquake to continue decades after the initial event. Pang, for example, has also studied aftershocks as recent as 2017 from the 1983 Bora Peak earthquake in central Idaho. Quote, there are formulas to predict how many aftershocks you should see for Hebgen Lake, they're like, they look like a deficit in number of aftershocks. Now that we've had these, it has evened things out back up to the original expectations, he said. A second culprit? The southern cluster of the Maple Creek Swarm seems to have a different origin. 
Although the northern cluster was lined up with the Hebgen Lake Fault, the southern cluster lined up was rotated about 30 degrees and the quakes were about 0 0.6 miles, one kilometer, shallower than the northern cluster. So the researchers concluded, although the shaking in the northern cluster influenced the southern cluster, the preliminary cause of the southern shaking was likely subsurface movement of magma. Okay, so the southern se se section had most likely been due to the subsurface magma movement. Quote, we do consider it to be one small a swar swarm altogether, Copper said, because they were so close, there was some feedback and influence between the two sections. Copper says that the results highlight how earthquakes are different than other natural hazards. Floods, hurricanes, or wildfire fires are over when they're over. But earthquakes don't happen as a single discrete event in time. He says the specter of aftershocks can continue for months, years, or even, as Maple Creek shows, for decades later. The study was funded by the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, the Brinson Foundation, and the Carrico Funds. And the story source is from the University of Utah. Keith Copper, Mark Hale, Relu Barlacu, Jamie Farrell, Robert Smith. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.